While I'm waiting for my new Pebbles to arrive, I picked up some brand new in box original Pebble classics on eBay. While they may be new in the box, these are over 12 years old because the original Pebbles were released in January of 2013. Here's his brand new in box Pebble, even has the protective screen cover on it. Connecting a charger to it gets you a flashing Pebble screen, which is indicative of a weak and dead battery. What I'm going to show in this video is how I change the battery using an alternate method without disassembling the entire watch. And then I'm going to change out the zebra strips to avoid any screen tearing. And I'm also going to swap out the red housing that this came with, with one of my black ones. I'm going to use a T4 Torx screwdriver head to remove the back cover. Now using a pry tool, carefully lift up the back cover, but be careful not to pull it completely off because the vibrator motor is connected by adhesive on the other side. You'll have to use a tool to pry it off. I tried using a club card. I ended up using a SIM tray ejector tool. Here's the back cover. Notice the rubber ring around the perimeter, the location of the vibration motor, and the two notches. Be careful not to break these. Be careful when handling the area around the vibration motor because the adhesive is still there. You don't want to rip it off its wires. Here's the battery we want to work on. You'll want to pry it up from this side in this direction. Unfold it this way and you can see that there's a very delicate L-shaped ribbon that connects to the other side of the motherboard. It's only soldered on there and usually people just rip it off but then they have to take apart the entire watch to get to the solder points. Work really carefully to avoid ripping it off. But even if you do, you still can save the watch by taking it apart and using the method shown by others. So it's not really that high of a risk because you have a fallback method. I'm going to make an incision on the top edge of the battery as shown. You have to unfold the connector. Here's how it looks unfolded. Now you simply use some nice cuticle cutters or something maybe a little bit more precise and sharp. Maybe you have better tools than me and just cut this thing off as shown. Be careful not to cut into the battery. You just need to cut off the two contacts. Now you have to carefully remove the tape that surrounds the contact points. Work slowly, use a needle nose tweezer, and you can get the tape off exposing the metal contacts. Here's how those two contact points look like. I'm going to make it neater by folding in the two extruded metal contacts that I cut off. Here's how it looks like after I bent them down flat. This is an old battery that I took apart from another watch. I've labeled the negative and positive side on how it connects to that connector board. Now this is the new battery I got from AliExpress. I'm going to trim the wires so that there's not any extra wiring that I need to tuck in. Then I'm going to strip the wire make sure there's metal exposed. This is how it should look like. You should spread some flux around the solder points and then make sure there's some solder flowing onto the points that make contact. Be very careful not to burn the ribbon cables around it. Here I have two solder points on a negative and positive. Now I'm going to attach the wires to it. Make sure the wires have some flux on it also. There's the negative. There's the positive. 
Now to fit this back in, I have to fold the board vertical to make the best efficient use of space. But I realized this battery is a little bit bigger than the other one I had. I fit the battery in there just like this without any issue. But this one, it seems like they put a little bit of extra wrapping around it. So I'll have to trim it down and be careful not to cut into the battery. Just trim off the extra wrap that's around it. You may have to do some unfolding, but there is definitely extra material around this battery. Now make sure that board is vertical again and everything fits in there pretty well. Turn it around and if you don't see anything on the display, connect the charger to it. It should work as long as everything is still intact. Once it gets to this screen, you should be good to go. At this point, you can put the back cover on and you're good to go with software updates and connecting to the new app. But I'm going to continue on and update the zebra strips to avoid the screen tearing and move it over to a black case. To get to the zebra strip and move it over to the case at the same time, we're going to have to remove the internals out of this case. The best way to do it is to pry it up from these two points, this corner here or this top side, because there's only plastic in this area. You don't want to pry from this side because this is where the contacts for the buttons are. And on this side is the contacts for the charge port and the other button. I'm going to use my needle nose tweezer. You can also use a small flathead screwdriver. Just be very careful. Once you get it freed, you can just lift it off. I've seen some where there's a little bit of adhesive on one of the corners, but in most cases, you can just lift it off freely. Here's a zebra strip that you have to upgrade. It's stuck onto the screen contacts. You can just lift it off with your tweezers. Here's how it looks like compared to the pink one that's a little bit taller so that there's more squish to it when you put everything back in. Now this is the black body that I'm going to transfer the internals into. I simply have to take everything apart just like this one. The buttons on this one were faulty already and there's no way to fix it. You see this one still has the original blue zebra strips. Position the pink zebra strips like this. It should go in here cleanly between the ribbon cable and the plastic chassis. Now you can push it back into the new case. I like to go in with the three button side first and then push in on the other side. Just be careful, make sure all the cables are going in smoothly. The side with the new zebra strip might be a little bit raised up because of the size of the zebra strip. It's okay, once you put the cover back on, the screws will hold it in place. You can turn it around and make sure that it works. One thing to note is that there's a little snap-on connector in the back that can be easily dislodged while you're working on this. If the screen doesn't come on, check this connector and make sure it's on securely. It may be underneath some black electrical tape that covers it. Now you can put the back cover on. Hold it down with your fingers because like I said, the new Zebra strip might be a little bit taller than the old one. So there's a little bit more pressure you need to apply on one side. So just hold it down with your finger while you put the screws on. After you have everything assembled, push the back button to cancel that screen that it was displaying. It asks you to cancel the update. Hit yes. I'm going into my settings and checking the firmware and recovery firmware that came from this new inbox watch. You can see the firmware is version 1.14.4 and the recovery is 1.5.5. Based on my previous experience, this is too old to be recognized by the new Pebble app. I can demonstrate this by trying to use a phone with the brand new app installed and trying to connect to the watch. As you can see, it cannot find the watch even though Bluetooth discovery is on and the phone is searching. So I'm going to bring out my other phone that has the old Pebble app, the last one that Google allowed on the Play Store. I had to sideload it because they removed it eventually. But I think things in the back end has been updated and now it can connect and update the firmware, but only using this older app. As you can see, it was able to detect the Pebble and when I try to connect to it, it will ask to update it. 
I found that when I get the pairing request, it's always best to confirm on the watch side first and then confirm on the phone side. Give it a few seconds, it took a while for it to connect. But eventually it did and now I have the option to update my Pebble. Go ahead and do so, it's going to ask you to connect the charger to the watch before it can update. Now just let it do its thing. Videos can be fast forwarded 10x because it takes a few minutes. Once it's done, take the watch and check the information. It should be in the latest firmware and recovery. For this original Pebble, is 3.12.3 .3 for the firmware, and the recovery should be version 3.8. Now, since I'm going to be using this on a new app and on a different phone, I'm going to remove all the Bluetooth connections on the watch side. So go back into your Bluetooth connection and delete this previous connection. For me, it's my Think phone, which is called the Moto TP. And now on the phone side, to prevent the phone from constantly trying to connect back to the watch, I'm going to go into the app info for the Pebble app and clear the storage so that it's like a fresh install. If there's a request on the watch side, cancel that. Now I'm going to take out my new phone with the brand new official Pebble app. And you can see while this one failed to detect and connect previously with the older firmware, now it can detect the watch. It found it right away. Go ahead and go through the routine, giving it the permissions it needs and authorize all the pair requests. Remember to always accept on the watch side first before accepting on the phone side. For some reason it likes to pair twice. So I'm going to accept on the watch side but now on the phone side, the notification kind of disappeared, but it's in my notification bar as you see the Bluetooth logo on the top left side. I pulled down my notification, but I can't get to it. For some reason, now it's back on the app. I guess it's still a little bit buggy, but it still works. Go ahead and accept it. And you see on the watch side, the pairing was successful again. If you wait a few seconds, it's not asking to connect again. That should be a good connection this time. You can go into the watch faces and update your watch face. I didn't log in yet, so I have to go in, put in my credentials and switch to Rebel. It's still using Rebel in the back end. After I'm logged in successfully, my watch faces appear and I can set my watch face to my favorite one, which is 91 Dub version 4. I can go through the settings and save it. And now my Pebble watch is ready to go. I can't wait to get my new Pebble, but honestly, this one is all I need. So if you haven't had any experience with the Pebble brand or the functionality of a Pebble and you don't want to pay for a brand new one, try restoring an old one from eBay and get experience at a very affordable price if you think you have the skill to restore it and bring it back from the dead because these are still very functional as a smartwatch and it's still my all-time favorite.